Hello everyone and welcome to the chain rule. So in this section, we're going to learn how to compute derivatives of functions that are created through composition. So what happens if you have a function inside a function? So the chain rule in general is not like the product rule or the quotient rule where you have like a, a nice formula where as long as you label u and v correctly, you can then just apply the formulas, the corresponding formulas, and you're good to go. So the chain rule, the formula in general, is not very user-friendly. So here, how do we compute? So the, the last rule of differenti differentiation here is how do you compute the derivative of f of u of x? So here, my function f has inside of it another function and we want to know how to, com how to compute the derivative of such a function. So typically we call f the outside function. So f is the outside function and u is the inside function. So how do you compute the derivative of f at u? So the trick here is the following. First, you compute f prime and you're not touching the inside. So if you have like sine of x squared, uh, it would become cos of x squared. So you're only computing the derivative of the outside and you're not touching the inside. And here as an habit, I like to put the formula inside in a box so that I remember to not change it. It's like protected in that little box. But then what you do after, you need to take into account that there is something inside. So the chain rule tells you that afterwards, what you have to do, you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside formula. So whatever you have inside, you don't touch. You just compute the derivative of the outside, You come and you keep the inside the same way, but then you take care of that inside by multiplying it, and that's the chain rule part. You just puke out okay, the inside derivative, and you have your chain rule. So again here, the general formula for the chain rule, not super user friendly, but I'm going to give you specific examples of how to use a chain rule uh, for functions that we've learned already. For example, if you have like a function of the form something to the power n. So if you have like some formula to the power n, so you're just using your regular power rule where the n that is the power will become the coefficient in front of that term. So my term in the box is protected, not change. And then the new power is the former power minus one. And then afterwards, of course, afterwards what you do, you multiply by the inside derivative. So you always, like you see that in all those formulas, the u prime comes after. So uh, what about the, the general exponential function with the chain rule? So if you have like e to the power of something, so we know ex goes to ex. So if you have e to the power of some shit, it will just stay first, e to the power of that shit. So untouched. But afterwards, afterwards, you need to puke. You need to puke out. Okay. The actual formula for the derivative of that uh, function u. So you always, so whatever's in the, the, Whatever formula you have at the power, you don't touch, okay, but you just multiply afterwards by the derivative of that power. So what about ln of u? So what do you do if you have ln of u? Again, always go back to your formula. So if you remember that ln of x is 1 over x, if you have ln of something, you're going to get 1 over that something untouched. You know, it's in the box, and it's only afterwards that you multiply after by u prime. Sometimes some people will write it directly as u prime because u prime times one is u prime over ux, that's fine too. But I like the first format, even if it's longer, because you can really feel again, you know, that one over x formula. So one of something, it's one over that something untouched times that something prime. So derivative of sine, we know it's cos. So if you have sine of something, it will be cos of that something and afterwards you puke out, okay, the inside derivative. If you have cosine of something, then we know that derivative of cosine is minus sine, so if you have cosine of something, you're going to get minus sine of that something, and afterwards, you multiply by the inside derivative. So that's a chain rule part. So in general, whatever function, function you have, you compute its derivative, you don't touch the inside, it's never changed, and then you multiply afterwards by u prime. A couple of remarks here uh, with the chain rule and some basic, basic algebraic properties. Uh, we can uh, now talk about the derivatives of of the um, the general exponential function and the general logarithmic function. So suppose a is a strictly positive number and it's not one. 
uh, if you have to compute the derivative of ax, okay, when, when, where now a is any base, okay, any base, uh, strictly bigger than zero and not equal to one, then you're going to get ln of a times ax. So what's new here in the in this formula is that you need to introduce the ln of a uh, part. So if you're computing the derivative of two to the x, it will become ln of two to the x. And then if you have log base a of x, uh, this is just actually uh, the, the fact that log a is the same thing as ln of x over ln of a, so you're just dealing with a coefficient. We could have introduced that formula a long time ago, but uh, since we know the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x, then if you have log of a, because it's ln of x over ln of a, then you just have that ln of a that goes down there too. Okay, so, um, so if you're differentiating log base 2 of x, you're going to get 1 over ln of 2 x. Okay, so it's really close to the original formula, but um, um, but that's, uh, and of course, as soon as you have a new formula, you get a new chain rule. So that's one thing you need to remember now, as soon as you have a new formula, like what would be the derivative of a to the power of something? Well, because the derivative of ax is ln aax, then if you have a to the power of something, you're going to get ln a, a to the power x. So you're just using this brand new formula here. And afterwards, you have to multiply by u prime. And now what, what happens if you want to compute the derivative of log a, a of something, well, because the formula of log a of x is 1 over log a of x using that second new formula here, um, then if you're doing this in, um, in general for log a of something, you're going to get first 1 over log a of that something times the derivative of that something. So this is something that is that you need to be aware of as soon as you learn the derivative of a brand new function, there's a chain rule that comes with it. Okay, so, uh, and we will not always reintroduce, you know, like the um, the chain rule for brand new function. Like for example, if you know by now that the, deriv the derivative of tan of x is secant squared, well, if you have to differentiate the derivative of tan of something, it's going to be secant squared of that something times that something prime. Okay, so, that's the, the idea of the chain rule. Okay, if you know how to differentiate like a single, a simple func function, if you compose it with something else, then you can, you know how to differentiate it with um, the chain rule. All right, so that's that's it for going all over, over all those uh, rules. Now let's practice those rules with examples. Here we go. So let's compute f prime for the following functions. So first question, f of x is equal to x squared plus sine of x plus 1, all of that to the power 5. So really here my function is what? It's something to the power 5. I know the derivative of x5 is 5x4. So if you have like something to the power 5, so the power is 5. So if you're computing f prime, so if you're computing f prime, so the 5 falls up front as a coefficient. The inside, what's inside the box is untouched, so it's protected, okay? And the new power is 5 minus 1, which is just 4. And then what you have to do is afterwards, you need to multiply by the derivative of that box. Of course, if you can just write it right away as being 2x plus cos of x plus zero, you can do it right away. But of course, for um, for my um, for my explanation here, I'm going to go through all the details. So it's good sometimes to write it just to make it clear. So I haven't computed derivative, but I know that that's what's going to go there. So I like to write when I'm not sure and you're learning this. So it's five. So you have like some shit to the power five. So it becomes five times that shit to the power four times the derivative of that shit. Okay, so here we go. And now we have a question and a question. Now the derivative of x squared is just 2x. The derivative of sine of x is cos of x. The derivative of plus 1 is 0. So your final answer is 5, open bracket, x squared plus sine of x plus 1 to the power, close bracket to the power 4, times open the bracket, 2x plus cos of x, close bracket. Okay, so that's my chain rule. So Let's do another example. So if you want to compute the derivative of the square root of x squared plus 1, which is not x plus 1, okay, don't bring the square root down on a sum, okay, that's a sign of weakness. So what do we have here? Square root, typical habit here. So we have something to the power 1 half. Um, so I'm going to use the power rule with the chain rule. So the 1 half falls up front as 1 half. 
and then the new power is one half minus one, which simplifies to minus one. My box is unchanged, but then afterwards, now we're getting a bit more comfortable, but afterwards I multiply by the derivative of that box. And here, derivative of x squared plus one is just two x, and I'm good. You could leave the answer like this, but of course, one half times two, that's just one. And I multiply the x up, so I get x for the numerator and that negative one half will go down as positive one half and I'm using the square root notation afterwards. So you can simplify or not if you want to, but uh, th that line here okay, is enough, sorry, that line here is enough for a correct answer. This shows clearly that you've applied the chain rule. Um, if it, well, sorry, efficiently. All right, whoa. All right, one more, a uh, couple more examples. So by the way, right now I'm doing all examples involving the power rule and the chain rule. So I have one over x4 plus one. Yes, you could do that one using the quotient rule where u would be one and v would be x4 plus one. But normally if you have a, a quotient and the numerator is just a number, it's actually going to be more efficient to do this as a power rule, sorry, a power rule followed by a chain rule. So what we have here is we can write one over x4 plus one as x4 plus one to the power minus one and then just use a power rule. So my power is minus one, it falls up front as a coefficient. My new power is my former power minus one, which is minus two. That box is untouched, it's protected, and afterwards you multiply by the derivative of the inside, and the derivative of x4 is just four x cubed plus zero. And if you want, if you really wish to simplify, you can. So I multiply my minus one with the minus four x cubed, and for my numerator, and then for my denominator, I just get x4 plus 1 to the power 2. Oh, secant. So we know secant. So for the next example, so we know secant is 1 over cos, which is the same thing as cos to the power minus 1. So here we go, chain rule. So the minus 1 will fall up front as a coefficient. The new power is the former power minus 1. Minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2. The box does not change times the derivative of the inside, derivative of cos is minus sign. Of course, if you simplify a bit stuff here to see uh, an answer, so this one is a good exercise because I'm, I strongly suggest that you learn how to compute derivative of secant as being secant tangent, but it comes from a chain rule once you simplify it. So here the two minuses cancel each other. So you have sine on top and cos squared at the bottom. If you break the cos squared as one over cos times sine over cos, you get secant tangent. And I really strongly, strongly suggest that from now on, if you have to differentiate the term secant, that you don't do the chain rule or you don't do, you could do it also with the quotient rule that you just transform secant into secant tangent and I'll, I'm going to be super happy and it's going to be way more efficient for you just to learn this as a new, as a new formula. And actually as an exercise, I want you to double check that if you compute, so following the exact same steps here and the exact same way of simplifying um, things. So if you use the solution uh, of the example D, I want you to verify that the derivative of cosecant of x is minus cosecant of x cotangent of x. And actually now with the quotient rule and the chain rule, uh, I, I wrote this as a nice remark here, and I strongly, strongly suggest that you learn, that you add this list of six derivatives to your basic list. Um, so we now have a list for all the derivatives for all the six trigonometric functions. So we know from basic, basic formula, that derivative of sine is cosine, derivative of cosine is minus sine. From the quotient rule, we, we I did for you that derivative of tan was secant squared. You did as, as an exercise, and you verified, hopefully, that derivative of cotangent of x is minus cosecant squared of x. I just did derivative of secant of x and showed that it was secant of x tangent of x. And now I want you to try and double check that derivative of cosecant of x is minus cosecant of x cotangent of x. Uh, so yeah, so six formulas for the trig functions. Um, a lot of people think that, oh, I need to learn all those things. I'm going to give you a couple of tricks that I like to use. The first thing that people tend to, to confuse is when do we have a negative inside our formula. 
And the trick is actually uh, is something that you can, like if you just use your ears, you can actually use that trick to decide if you need a minus or not. So here for the minus, if your trick function starts with a co, it will have a negative. You see here the derivative of cosine, the derivative of cosine is minus sine. So I have a co in cosine and there's a minus there's a minus inside the formula. Look at the derivative of cotangent. So it starts with co, and there's a negative one, and it's cosecant. It starts with a co, and there's a negative one also. So any trig function that starts with a co, you put a negative in front of it. And for the, the brand new four, actually I remember just learning, okay, the derivative of tangent and secant, and the other ones, they basically sound the same. What I mean by this is that if you know that the derivative of tangent is secant squared, then the derivative of cotangent is cosecant squared. So it's the exact same formula, but you just add a co, and because there's a co, you also add a minus one. So same thing for secant. If you, if you listen to the formula, if you know that the derivative of secant of x is secant of x times tangent of x, then the derivative of cosecant of x is cosecant of x, cotangent of x. So I'm just adding those cos, and of course, with the minus one. So anyways, use your own trick, okay? So, but that's the trick I use to remember all six, okay? So the co for the negative, and for for the, the, the more advanced one, for tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant, there's basically, in my mind, only two formulas where you just add the cos and the negatives when needed. Anyways, for that, uh, first step inside the chain rule, I will stop the video there and we'll do more examples. All right, bye-bye.